Hello, and welcome to Palatine Public Library Digging Dinosaurs. I'm Miss Glenda, and we're going to do a little investigating and learn some things about dinosaurs today. I have a couple of books to share with you, and then some activities and ideas that you can um, maybe try at home. All right, let's get started with our first book. It's called Hello World Dinosaurs by Jill MacDonald. Long ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth. Today, all you can see are their bones at a museum. Dinosaurs are extinct. Dinosaur bones are found by paleontologists. A paleontologist is a scientist who studies fossils and then they fit them together like a puzzle. Here's some of the tools that they might use in their job. A brush and a hammer, a chisel, a tape measure, a measuring tape, and a magnifying glass. Now, some dinosaurs were very big, like Aptosaurus. Its long neck could reach high up into the treetops. And other dinosaurs were really small, like this one. This one's about the size of a chicken, but it could run really quickly to get away from its larger enemies. I'm going to have a go at saying its name. It's a Campsognathus. There it is. Dinosaur names are tricky, aren't they? They are. But here's one you might know. It has three horns on the top, which it used for protection. One, two, three. That's right. It's a Triceratops. That was a large, heavy dinosaur. And do you know, Triceratops had hundreds of teeth and new teeth would replace the old ones when they wore down. This slow moving dinosaur that looks like he's wearing a suit of armor is called an Ankylosaurus. And here's another small dinosaur, very speedy though. And this dinosaur had feathers and this is a Velociraptor. Raptor. Let's try that one again. Velociraptor. Oh, here's another one that you might know. This is one of my favorites. This one has triangle shaped plates down its back. And it, see this spiky tail? This is a Stegosaurus. And Stegosaurus means plated lizard. Tyrannosaurus Rex. I have a Tyrannosaurus Rex sitting right behind me here. It's only pretend though. He has a large head, doesn't he? Yes, and sharp teeth and strong legs. Tyrannosaurus Rex was one of the most powerful meat-eating dinosaurs. But his arms were really small, even though his body was very large. Here's an Iguodon. He was herbivorous. That means he ate only plants, no meat. Now, do you see that big spike right there on his thumb? He used to use that to open fruits and seeds and to scare off other dinosaurs too. Where did baby dinosaurs come from? Baby dinosaurs hatched from eggs that were laid in nests, kind of like birds. Birds um, lay eggs in nests, but the dinosaur parents dug their nests into the ground or built them out of mud. Now you know a little bit more about dinosaurs. It's time to let out one big roar. The end. And we're going to roar right into our next book, which is called Dinosaur Bones by Bob Barna. That's all we have left of the dinosaurs, isn't it? Dinosaurs are gone for good. The last dinosaur lived 65 million years ago. Dinosaurs became extinct because of changes in the climate and it made it hard for them to find food. Maybe dinosaurs once lived in your neighborhood. I don't think we actually had dinosaurs right here in Palatine. 
But there were some in America where we live. And the first dinosaur bones were discovered in England in 1820, in the 1820s. Fossils are the bones and footprints that have been preserved in our earth so that we can see that dinosaurs were really here. Now, dinosaurs had teeth to bite and jaws to chew. And the shape of the jaws and the teeth helped scientists find out if a dinosaur was a meat or a plant eater. Dinosaurs with sharp teeth like this, T-Rex, were meat eaters. Dinosaurs walked on earth when those bones were new. Tyrannosaurus rex means king of tyra tyrant lizards. Its arms were so short it couldn't even scratch its tin. The first T-Rex skeleton was found in Montana, in, in here, in America, in 1902. They were very big. And the word dinosaur actually means terrible lizard. They had bones for legs and bones for hips. Scientists studied the bones to find out about dinosaurs. That's how they'd find out about them. And remember, they put them together like a big puzzle. Dinosaur bones used on long dinosaur trips. Some dinosaurs traveled and hunted in groups or herds. Living in groups, that helped protect them from other predators. Ancient footprints show that baby dinosaurs were often in the middle of the, or the center of the herd and that protected them. Dinosaurs, they had bones with discs and bones with points. Do you recognize this one? This is the Stegosaurus. He had pointed bones on his back and a small head. Bones for running. This is a Stegosaurus again, and he spent most of his time munching plants to feed his huge body. Today, only the bones are left to show. Triceratops had a skull one third the length of its body. It gathered plants with its turtle-like beak right here. And remember, it had three horns that helped protect it too. Dinosaurs rumbled and creaked long ago. Triceratops means three-horned face. So maybe one day when you see dinosaur bones at a museum in time, scientists put together the bones like a puzzle. They used chisels and saws and dental drills and then they put them all together. Remember, a dinosaur once used his bones to get around. There's all kinds of different dinosaurs. We just learned about a few of them today. All right, so there's our stories and now we're going to move on to our first activity. And I'm going to show you how to make your own fossil. All right. All right, here we are. And I'm going to show you how to make your own fossil at home. I have a little can of Play-Doh here. And I've made some Play-Doh balls. So you just make them by rolling it around in your hand. And now I'm going to press it out flat, like a pancake. All right, so I'm just going to use my hand and press it out. Can you see? Your hand press to make a nice circle like a pancake and then I have a toy dinosaur a little toy dinosaur and I'm going to lay it down in the play-doh in the middle like that and then I'm going to gently press press it in not too hard because it'll make a hole if you go too hard but just press it in so it kind of sinks in there and then carefully lift him out. And there's your fossil. 
All right, now, if you don't have a dinosaur at home, that's okay. You can make some imprints in the Play-Doh so they look like fossils. Let me show you a couple of things I gathered around and to use. So one of them is just a Duplo block or a Lego block. And I'm gonna take it this side up and press it in. Again, not too hard, so it makes a hole, but not too soft. And then lift it out and it made an imprint there. All right, so a couple of other things I gathered. Let's try another one. Roll my ball, press it flat, and maybe you could find a rock. Press in your rock, and see. Or I have a twig, or how about a pine cone? You could use all kinds of things you might find around the house. Or a golf ball. Let's try this one. So if we can roll it. Just press a little bit and roll it into the Play-Doh. That one didn't show up too well, did it? Let's try the pine cone. I'm going to press it down this way. Whoa! That one worked pretty well. All right, so those are just a few ideas. Well, very quickly, I have a couple of fossils I can show you that my family found. So there's one. They're not dinosaur fossils, but they're just different fossils um, that we found. All right, here are some examples of how I made my dinosaur skeleton. I used, for the big ones, some toilet roll holders, empty toilet roll holders, wrapping paper holders and kitchen towel holders. If you don't have those things around your house right now, you could maybe use some Q-tips. Uh, you just need a little piece of construction paper or even uh, copy paper. The brown one, I cut up a grocery bag and use that. I use pipe cleaners, Q-tips, you could use sticks, or even cut up some paper strips and make your dinosaur bones that way. Just use your imaginations and create your own dinosaur skeleton. Now we're gonna do some measuring. This is a dinosaur foot and this is to scale. So a real dinosaur foot was about three foot long, three, three and a half foot long, a T-Rex foot that is, and about one, one and a half feet wide. So. Jean in graphics at the library made this wonderful foot for me. But if you don't have one of these lying around your house, I'm gonna show you how to recreate it out of a grocery bag. So uh, let's get started with some measures. All right, so you could take a grocery bag and cut it open and trace your foot on the grocery bag like this and cut it out if you like. This one's not quite as big as the one that G made for me, but it doesn't matter. If you don't have grocery bags, maybe you could get some sidewalk chalk and draw one outside. You could use some blocks and make one with those or Legos or some yarn or string to mark it out. Get your grown up to help you and have some fun and then start measuring. And you can use all kinds of things to measure with. You can use a ruler or I have Maybe you have one of these at your house too. I have a tape measure. So how you measure is you have to place one end all the way down here. That's gonna be my beginning. And then stretch it out all the way to the other end. It's kind of tricky to show you here like this. And then that measures 36 inches. That's three feet. Some of the other things you could use to measure with, let me bend down here, get my basket. I have some blocks. And you could do that by laying them on your dinosaur foot. Okay, there you can see now, like this. And you can go this way to see how long it was and just keep going all the way to the end and then count them. Or you can go this way, like this, and that will tell you how wide it is. Let's see, what do you think? You can estimate and guess and see if you can figure it out, see if you get the right number. I think it's gonna be 10 across. All right, shall we see if I'm right? Yes, I'm almost to the other side. Let's see. All right, one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I was really close. I guess 10 and I got nine. So it got a few less than it measures. Anyway, another thing you could use, which is fun, is you could use your shoes. You could see how many of your shoes, how many steps it takes. And do you think it would take more or less if a grown-up shoes? Do you think their shoes are bigger than yours? What do you think? Anyway, have lots of fun measuring. Like I say, you can use all kinds of things that you find, your toys, all sorts of things. Measuring your dinosaur foot. All right, we will be back in just a moment with a little uh, craft for you to do. All right, I'm gonna get that set up. All right, I'm back with my simple craft for you to try out. I use an empty toilet roll holder to make my dinosaurs, and here they are. I've made quite a few. They're pretty easy to make and, and fun too. So, the first thing I did was trace on here how I want my dinosaur to go. So he stands up and I could play with him. So this, now, then you have to cut him out. It's a little bit tricky. So you might need a grown-up's help to do the cutting because it's kind of hard to cut, but you cut, cut out where you traced it. And then he's gonna come up and it's gonna look something like this. Oh, she will. And then, to make the face, what I did was I took this rounder piece and I bent it forward a little bit and then I put a crease in it. So press hard to make a crease and then it'll stay like that for the head. And then you can bend the tail if you want. You can cut some spikes in there if you like. You can use some crayons and color it in too. So there's lots of things. And you can use a crayons marker or even paint them. And then I just did the face with a marker and I drew the eyes and a little nose, even some eyebrows. You can decorate him and design him any way you like. Use your creativity and your imagination and you can make a whole herd of dinosaurs. All right, we will be back in just a moment with our final activity for today. We are going to do a little experiment and see what happens. We're going to make a volcano. All right, let me get that set. All right, here we are with our final activity for today. We're going to do a baking soda and vinegar experiment and see if we can make a volcano. Nobody really knows what happened to the dinosaurs, how they became extinct, but one of the theories is that a, a great massive meter hit earth and it caused a great big creator and that in turn caused volcanoes to erupt and the, the weather to change, climate change, and the dinosaurs could no longer find all the food they needed. So like I said, we don't know for sure, but we're gonna uh, see if we can make our own volcano. So we need some white distilled vinegar, just regular white distilled vinegar and baking soda. Baking soda is our base, it's a powder, and this is our liquid. And then I read that if you add Dawn or any kind of dishwashing liquid, if you have some, it makes it extra bubbly. We'll see. This is my first time trying this. I also have a measuring cup and you can either use paint or food coloring if you have it. Have the grown-up help you with the food coloring because that can be really uh, messy too. And I got a couple of spoons here. I have one of these volcanoes that I borrowed from the library. But if you don't have one, you could maybe use a vase or a plastic cup, some other container to put your ingredients, to mix your ingredients in. You can do this outside too, because sometimes it can be a little bit messy. So let's mix up our ingredients. So I'm going to pour some vinegar into this measuring cup. Might need some help with the tops too. All right. So here's our vinegar. Let's pour some in there. Vinegar looks like water, doesn't it? But it isn't water and doesn't smell very good and it doesn't taste good. So don't drink it. Never drink anything when you don't know what it is. All right, so I'm gonna add some food coloring to this. I think I'm gonna use red. All right, 
going to count out some drops. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put five drops in there. And then let's just mix it up so it all gets mixed up. All right, I'm going to set that to the side for a moment. And now in here, I'm going to put some of the baking soda. Let's see. Put a couple of scoops of this in. So it depends how big your container is as to how much you need. Mine's pretty small, so I'm going to use one, whoops, two, and another one, three. And it's just like a white powder. And then I'm going to put some squirts of the dishwashing liquid in there. Liquid squirt. And mix those together. Okay. So this is going to be my base and my vinegar right here is the acid and we're going to see what happens when we put them together. All right. So let me show you. All right. So here's my volcano in the middle and I used a, a, a baking sheet, a cookie sheet with a lip because it's going to hopefully bubble over and it's a good way to catch it in there. I put some sand in and some dinosaurs and some rocks just to kind of make it fun. So first we're going to put in our baking soda concoction right into our volcano. Fill it up. All right. Let's get all that in there. And then going to pour the vinegar on and see what happens. So when they're combined together, they're going to react and make a gas, carbon dioxide, and we'll see what happens with it. All right. So the baking soda and the vinegar both have a lot of energy. They have a lot of wiggles they need to get out. Are you ready? Here we go. We're going to pour this onto our volcano. Whoa! Do you see what's happening? Let me spin it around for you. Came out this way. Wow, look at that. Wow. Should we try it again? See if it keeps going? All right, let's put a little bit more in there. Wow. That really does make a lot of bubbles. And you can hear it if you listen really carefully, if you get a chance to do this. You can hear the bubbles making little noises as they come together and pass the energy on to each other. So there's our experiment with baking soda and vinegar and we caused a chemical reaction. All right, that's all we have today for digging dinosaurs. Thank you for joining me and Palatine Library and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.